Hello, grade nine science class. Welcome to the course. My name is Mr. DeCazel. Uh, this is grade nine science. We're gonna start with the reproduction unit. This is lesson one. It's titled the nucleus and DNA. What I wanna do though, is I wanna talk about how we are going to set this whole thing up. Um, it's probably gonna be new for a lot of us. Um, but what I'd kind of like for this to be is a work at your own pace. I'm going to give you a schedule and I'm going to try to help you stay on that schedule. But if you are ahead, if this is something that interests you, if you want to do two lessons in one day, this is going to be set up in a way where that is possible for you. And I hope that that benefits you um, and that we can make this work together. Uh, I'll explain how this is all going to work. You're going to see a title slide like this. Lesson 1, Lesson 5, whatever it is with the title of the lesson on the slide as well as below with the lesson number. That one below will stay there for the entire time. I'm also going to have key points up at the top for every single lesson. Uh, it might be 3, it might be 4, it might be 2. I'm trying to go over 4. Um, as you can see, today's key points are trait, DNA, chromosome and gene and we'll talk about all of those and it's this is just to help guide you uh, hey this is important and sometimes I'll go this is really important to make sure you write this down or um, I'll say things like that that will help us out uh, above me as well you see the Morris school logo uh, my name and the course uh, as well as me here on the bottom right um, you have a booklet um, you should have seen on the first page it says reproduction. I hope that it will have some type of table of contents. It doesn't currently. I'm still working on it with all the links. Um, but there will be sections, blank sections with lines for you to copy down notes. There will be diagrams included that will hopefully help us pace where we are in the booklet. And then there will be... Uh, Assignments essentially. Uh, I title them in the PowerPoint your job. This is your job for the day um, There are specific assignments and what I would like is when you're done the uh, Whole unit to hand in the booklet uh, With all your assignments completed now I won't mark every assignment but to be able to see how you've done and that you've tried or completed everything uh, in the booklet is really important uh, so each lesson will have one, there might be one or two that have two things to do. Uh, they are on, often not very onerous. Uh, they often require you to look back on some notes, maybe read something, uh, write an opinion, uh, and things like that. So without further ado, we're three minutes in. Uh, let's start. You should be on the first page, there should be lesson one, there should be notes. Let's get into it. So, uh, what physical features can vary from person to person? Uh, do you have a hitchhiker's thumb? That's a type of thumb that bends all the way back. Mine is completely straight. You can bend them back, you have a hitchhiker's thumb. Uh, can your tongue roll or not? That is something that can vary from person to person. Are your earlobes attached or are they uh, not attached? There is some um, pieces of skin that uh, sometimes attach people's earlobes or uh, you can see there's sometimes an indent for people whose aren't. That is a physical feature. Um, so these can vary from person to person. Uh, what I'd like you to do when we get to these slides is pause at a certain point and write down some of the important things. So on here, what I might write down is what physical features can vary from person to person and write down those examples. We can write down a few more. You probably know hair color varies from person to person. So does eye color, so does height, um, and everything in between about a person. Um, but what determines these traits? So writing down things that are on the slide often isn't complete. You don't need to write down every single thing word for word, but writing down some important things and adding some things that we talk about is a good idea. So what determines those traits? Let's move on. Uh, a trait is a particular feature that can vary in size or form from individual to individual within a species. 
So it is all the different things about you. Or if we're talking about dogs, it might be the color of coat, size of paws, floppy ears, things like that. Heredity is the process through which uh, traits are passed from individual to its offspring or children. So you can see key point one is trait. Uh, traits are features and they are passed from an individual to its offspring in the process of heredity. Um, nucleus is the organelle that is responsible for heredity. So the nucleus is responsible for passing down those traits and controlling the functions of the cell. Uh, the information, DNA, which we'll talk about soon, uh, is contained in the nucleus and determines traits and controls cell division. So DNA is found in the nucleus. The DNA is in the nucleus and controls heredity and all traits. Um, you should pause here and write down some important points from this slide. You can go back and listen to me again once you've written things down to get a clearer understanding. But if I'm going to write down a big picture thing, it would be that DNA is has all the information, it's contained in the nucleus, and it, it controls all the traits uh, that are passed from offspring to indi uh, individual to offspring through heredity. Um, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So DNA is in the nucleus. It carries the master set of instructions for the cell. Uh, DNA is made up of four parts. Um, don't worry about what they're called, nitrogen bases, we're not going to get into that anymore now. Uh, but just made up, know that DNA is made up of four parts and it's all about how they connect together. Chromosomes are DNA that will fold into a very compact X shape. So that's key point three. Um, we can see this under a microscope and that's how we always draw chromosomes when we get to drawing them. Uh, so chromosomes are made up of numerous genes, uh, contain the information for thousands of traits. So chromosomes are made up of DNA, they are contained within the nucleus, and the nucleus controls all your traits. Therefore, DNA controls all your traits. Again, I will um, kind of reiterate, uh, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, a big word. It carries all the instructions for the functions of the cell. Uh, and that DNA folds up into chromosomes. Those chromosomes and DNA, same thing, is in the nucleus of the cell. And the nucleus of the cell controls all the traits, hair color, eye color, height, all the things like that. So um, let's get to a picture. You can see that we have here DNA. Uh, it is in a coil. Uh, it might have seen it in sci-fi movies or others where it looks similar to this. It is folding up, folding up, and becoming more compact until it becomes an X-shaped uh, chromosome. So when I say chromosome, I'm talking about the same thing as DNA. Uh, so really, key points two and three, they are the same thing. This chromosome is stored within the nucleus. That's why we have it shown here. And the nucleus controls all the information uh, about your body that you need to create in your hair, your eye color, and everything about you. Um, so to reiterate, DNA gets coiled up into chromosomes which are stored in the nucleus and control everything about your traits. So chromosomes have segments on them called genes. So key point four is a gene. A gene is a small segment of DNA located on a chromosome that instructs the nucleus to produce a specific protein. The types of proteins made will be observable in the individual person. Uh, a gene contains the information uh, to produce a particular trait. Um, so genes are the sets of instructions for traits. You can have a particular gene that controls hair color. You can have a particular gene that controls eye color and height. And if you have a hitchhiker's thumb and if your earlobes are connected uh, or in unconnected, if you can roll your tongue or not, uh, if you have double joints or not, genes control all of these things. And they are small segments on uh, the chromosome. On the second page, I believe you have a picture of a pink chromosome 
or of an X, and it has lines on it that are labeled with genes. So each tiny section controls different things, and you can imagine that there is tons and tons of stuff to control within your body. So it is very important that those genes stay intact uh, and that they are read properly. Um, the types of proteins need to be observable, so that is what we mean when we say like eye color and hair color. Uh, they produce the information needed to uh, produce 90,000 to 100,000 different proteins used in cells of your body. They are very, very important segments uh, on chromosomes. Again, chromosomes are made up of DNA. DNA controls, has all the information that controls all of your traits. Um, that is how the key points relate to one another. Uh, so uh, you also have this picture, I believe, on the second page. Genes are kind of like um, trains. So you have different cars, and each car is a particular gene. Uh, it's all on the same train, on the same chromosome, but the genes are expressed differently. One car on the train determines eye color. Another car determines hair color, another determines height, another determines hitchhiker's thumb, your lobe connection, all that good stuff. Uh, an image of this train can hopefully help you uh, understand how a chromosome uh, contains all of these genes along it, uh, connected but separate. What I'd like you to do now is read about the traits that you have in your booklet. There are maybe nine or ten of them, and I'd like you to choose four of the observable traits and describe them in detail. So uh, which ones are interesting to you? It might be color blindness, it might be curly hair, it might be freckles. Um, which one relates to you? Which one is interesting to you? Uh, write about those. Uh, the second thing that I want you to do is more of a fun thing. I'd like you to go through the different traits in order, one, two, three, four, five, I think all the way to about 20 or 25, uh, and cross off what applies to you on the bingo card. Everyone has the same bingo card, so it will be the person who creates a line in the least amount of numbers. So if you go, uh, trait one applies to me, trait two applies to me, and then you go down to 10, and you have four or five of them in a line, depending on what kind of line you've made, uh, with the extra space or not, you can then call bingo, or just record what number you got to before you made the line. And if it's low enough, uh, the lowest probably couple of people will get some kind of prize. Um, I don't know what that prize will be or if I'm be allowed to give anything to you, but uh, we'll do our best. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, hopefully the future lessons will be just a little bit shorter because I won't have to do the whole opening spiel, but it is important to try to remember how we want to use this. Um, you should be able to watch the videos and go through the work in your booklet. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me or see me at school, uh, but I hope this was helpful uh, in conveying the information in an efficient way. Um, when we don't know exactly what it's all going to look like from now on. So I appreciate all the uh, hard work that you're going to do throughout the semester. And thanks very much for watching. We'll be back with Lesson 2 soon. Thank you.